Daniel chapter 10. We're reading from, we're reading verse 3, verse 11 to 13, and verse 20. I'm reading from the NIV. It says, I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips. I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you and stand up. For I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid. Daniel, since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourselves before God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So he said, do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I go, the prince of grace will come. So the first thing I want to talk to us this morning is the criteria for receiving help. God has made help available. Help is available. Just like oxygen is available. In spite of the fact that oxygen is available, you need a few things to be able to benefit from oxygen. There are some people, even though they're sitting in a room like this, where you're sitting and you're breathing without knowing that you're breathing, they have to do some extra work because their pathway has been broken. So they take the air in the same way you do, The blockage can be here. So anywhere from the tip of your nose to the very end of your lungs, if there is something wrong with that pathway, you will not be able to benefit from the oxygen that is free and available. And in some cases, you have to now pay extra to be able to use that oxygen, even though it is free. So God has made help available, but there are things there are pathways you need to go through, and if there is something wrong along that pathway, you may not be able to benefit from the free help that is available. Number one is preparation. Everybody prepared to come here. I saw the comments about the luggage, the days, and getting ready. That was all preparation. So if we look at the story there, in Daniel chapter 10 verse 3, the Bible says, I ate no choice food, no meat, no wine touched my lips. I used no lotions until the three weeks were over. People talk about Daniel fast and blah, 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 without knowing anything about it. What Daniel was talking about there is positioning himself. For some people, food and drink and whatever are a problem to you. They are a distraction. For somebody like me, fasting TV is a waste of time. I never watch it. I don't know what channel is anything. I never. If you see me watching, is that because there's something wrong and I have to sit down in one place? Or I'm trying to do my duty as a member of my family. <coughs> you will never see this. Oh, that's what they're watching on TV. No. So for me to fast TV, I'm deceiving myself. But if you say fast shopping, Hey, you keep me at home and you take away my cars. Take away my, even if you take the car, I will walk to the shop. So, some things are, are the things that would prepare you in particular for an encounter. So, preparation. He set himself aside from the things that would normally distract him. Because yesterday we were talking about dreams. But the things that you occupy your day with are likely to pop up in your dream life. Yes. And at times you can be confused as to whether God is trying to talk to you or not. I shared with you about leaving my phone in 
the room, rushing back from the reception to the room, and then dreaming that money got stolen. Can you see that? If not that my husband stepped in and said, hey girl, that was not just what happened yesterday, there's something else here. I would have missed that serious update. So preparing ourselves, putting ourselves in a position to receive help is very important. Being curious, desire to gain understanding. The Bible says, from the moment you set yourself to understand, you should always look to understand. As an African child, I didn't want to understand anything. I just wanted to cram it, deliver it in work, and have a one. And it affects us spiritually. We go to church. They tell you, you must so see for your firstborn. You don't bother to ask questions. They say you have to redeem. Every firstborn has to be redeemed. You have to buy a, 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 $200 to redeem your firstborn. <laughs> we don't ask questions. We're excited about the fact that a word has come. From where? <laughs> what kind of monetary redemption are we looking for? Mm -mm. So the blood of Jesus is not expensive enough. <laughs> Since from the day you set your heart to understand. There are two different messages in that sentence. Understanding is one. Setting yourself is another one. You must be persistent to know. Most of the times when I connect people to my husband and I say, look, you know, if you want to speak to my husband, I want people, I do say this a lot. I want them, I say, look, are you, are you sure you want to gain understanding? Because the questions he will ask you will make you consider your great ancestors. <laughs> and not only that, if he tells somebody, go and ask God about this. Because they are used to, people lay hands on them and say, I speak to you, it is done in Jesus' name. <laughs> but he's not doing that. They don't come back. They don't come back. Because they want an answer now that will finish the whole problem. <laughs> but he's telling you, when you go to see the specialist and they say, thank you so much, Grace, for coming in today. We're going to now send you for some ultrasound scan and I'll see you in six weeks. But you don't attend follow-up appointments. Just because you saw specialists one time, they say the results of this scan will decide which operation we will do. But you don't attend again. He said, set your heart to understand. That setting, he said, in six weeks' time, I'm going back to see the specialist. I must make sure that my ultrasound report is available before six weeks. That is a setting to understand. So if you are going to receive help, you must set yourself to understand. If you ask today, before you go to bed and say, Lord, show me what is happening to my daughter. I've noticed a change. Nothing happens that night. In the morning, you say, Father, thank you for a wonderful night. I'm still waiting. In the night, you are going to bed. Lord, please, tonight is another opportunity. Help me to understand what is happening to my daughter. I have three, four nights that I have the same dream. Every time I close my eyes, the dream continues. Why? I am set to understand. And I will ask God, can you please give me a bit more detail about what you showed me last night? And he will come back. He's a God that wants to tell you. He wants to tell you. He wants you to know. Humility. You need to be humble. When the angel touched Daniel, what was the first thing he did? Ah. He was overwhelmed by the presence of one who knows more than him. We take it to an extreme. We worship spiritual leaders. But what did the angel do? He says, get up. Say, stand up. And called him by a name. He says, great man. The angel said to Daniel, great man. Get up. 
Can you see that relationship? The person you needed help say, Ah, hey, you have come. The bearer of good news. The angel replied, Great man, please stand up. That should be the relationship between you and the person who is helping you to know. Why? Because they're not better than you. They just have a little bit more information than you do. And the minute they give you information, you too now know. That should be how. I mean, that's how you should be. You should now know. We shouldn't always be going to ask because you should now know. This is the part I really love. It says, Since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God. Can you see the arrangement? Mm -hmm. Set your mind. Gain understanding. Humble yourself. The next one, what did he say? Your words were heard. To receive help, what do you do? Speak. He says, your words were heard and I am sent in response to them. Did you hear anything there? Your words were heard and I am sent in response to your word. The reason nobody has been sent is because there has been no words from We moan. We complain. We hiss. We have sleepless nights. The only thing you haven't done is to speak. was speaking. I don't know how many of you have seen this video of the man whose music was very popular but he did not say any words in game. Has anybody seen it? Yes. You've seen it? My husband and I watch it. And people were playing guitar or whatever behind me. He's a black man. I wish I could find that video, my husband. Please find it for me. The man who sang nothing. Who sang nothing. I mean, there were no... You need to watch it to play. They will, they will find it. But you need to speak. The Bible says, I was sent in response to your words. Remember my son with the oil on his white cloth. The angel who delivered that soup was sent as soon as my son spoke. He said that there must be oil on the white shirt. I'll see you. Let me go and make sure it happens. Bass. Help will be sent in response to your words. The Bible says, but the prince of Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. After you've met the requirement for help, then it's time to pray for the delivery of your help. I'm not a professional baker, but I know if you miss a step in baking, the cake is never going to be the same. So if you look at what we've gone through this morning, setting your heart to understand, speaking, humbling yourself, saying the right words, presenting yourself in a position where you can hear. You've done that, and it appears that heaven is silent. What do you do? Move to the next step. The question now is, I've done everything, Lord. Why is help not coming? It's at that point, you can have a discussion about delay. Many people are praying against delay in marriage. They haven't even met the requirement. 
I asked one sister who contacted me before, I said, have you actually asked God for a husband? The Bible says, for your father in heaven knows what you need. He knows. People confuse that scripture. He knows what you need. Eh? He knows. You know your children need a pair of socks. But when your daughter comes home, I said, Mommy, I don't know what, what's happening to this song. What that tells you is, what you made available before, there needs to be an upgrade. If you have a child who never tells you anything is torn or one or two tight, you just keep going. Why? Because there are many things you are attending to. I ask people to treat God like they would treat earthly parents. Are responsible. He's like, but oh, God knows everything. God knows everything. So God knew that Daniel needed help. God knew that Daniel needed help. But when Daniel took a particular step, help was sent. Does that mean? Hold on. Hold on. Does that mean that God was ignorant of the help? Does that mean that God was ignorant of the help? No. But the Bible says that in response to your request, I have some said something. I love to balance the scriptures. Because at times we go from right from one end to the other. We have people who always say, Oh no, she. Oh no, she. Oh no, she. Oh no, she. God do it. God do it. God do it. God do it. No other prayer. God do it. God do it. God do it. And then the black. I need to ask for them. All things are mine. All things are mine. Five years, they are writing the same exam. Russia fire. All things are mine. All things are mine. I pass this exam. I pass this exam. Can you see a broad range? Both of them need to be coming to the middle. The person that has failed five times need to be asking, why? The person that is saying, Oluwashe, 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 Oluwashe. The person that is saying, God do it, God do it. I had somebody like that. God do it, God do it, God do it. Sister, why are you not pregnant? God will do it. Have you done any tests? No, God will do it. I mean, who and my husband is a man. God will do it. <laughs> I, listen to me. I asked. I said, okay. Uh, you've had a lot of skin changes recently. She said, yes. Are your periods regular? No, ma'am. When was the last time you had one? It was six months ago. Uh, the God that will do it is the one making me ask you a question because you are not ovulating. Mm -hmm. And the strength that your husband has released is going to have to fertilize an egg. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not giving an egg. So the doing that God will do is to give you the information so that you can know what to do. So what did I do? I challenged her. I said the miracle you need is the miracle of one egg. Mm -hmm. I said you know that it is possible that in the next like one month you should have an egg. She's curious. How? I said there is a tablet that we can give you. What tablet? I've been wasting many years. What tablet? I said that tablet is the miracle. Can you see the broad range of how we go? The help that that person needs was not. Is it because we hear testimonies? And I waited for 14 years and the Lord did it. Mm. Let me make you laugh. Um, one of my aburos in the US contacted me one day. She was very upset. She's a doctor. And she said, Auntie, I don't know what to do. I'm really angry right now. I said, what happened? She said, there is a very popular Nigerian musician a good Christian musician whose daughter is also very popular. She said, um, one of the days the mother was doing a live video and I saw her face. They had family friends from when they were very young. And she had very bad acne. 
So I contacted the mother. I said, why, why do she have acne like that now? And the mother said, we tried everything, nothing helped. And she said, I've sent some medication. She needs to take it for about six months. And her skin should clear up. When you run out of that, let me know. So a few weeks, months down the line, this girl was doing a live session. Actually, gone. <coughs> and she came to shake her skin. Oh, they need to be some of the <laughs> So this my sister called me and said, I am very angry. I said, what are you angry about? That she did not mention you? No. She said, no. That she is deceiving people. I said, okay, girl, calm down. Calm down. This is a three to six months patient. Your boss will say, so who's the blood you have to do? Let me that to you. He said, any patient that has a timeline, yeah, whatever. So it's just saying that for whatever situation you find yourself, if there is a timeline, wait. Yes, it just means if there's a timeline, just wait. Wait for that timeline to last. Of course, six months there. Yeah. No more medication. No more medication. And the sports came back. This girl never said thank you. So as the uh, tablets are clean finished, <laughs> she received a message on WhatsApp. Hello, Auntie. How are you? Long time. I was just wondering, my mom said you sent this. I was wondering if I could have some more. I thought I prepared her. I said, very simple, very easy. You don't need to express any shock or disappointment. Just say, the Lord will do it. <laughs>
he lifts me up. I see Omobi when, Omobi when, Omobi miscarried, Omobi, the picture of the baby. I'm like, oh, that ended well. And then I move on to the next one. But when you go and you don't return with thanksgiving, it puts you out of life for the next hell. Yeah. 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 A woman came into my inbox after four years. She came to send another request. Mm. And then she did so. She, she put on Instagram and she said, ah, just reading through our previous chat, I realized that I've not been back here. She came with another request. And then she, she just, oh, all the things we discussed, to be fair, actually, God has done it, and I realized that I have not been back. She was honest. Some people would just bypass that. Yeah. So next time you send me a message, do you eat it? Ah. <laughs> I want us to pray, and then I'll share with you a little bit more. It's important to desire to know. That was the beginning of Daniel's experience. When I set my heart to understand, Somebody was sent to me. Shall we stand? After this, we will sit down again and then I will teach you a bit more and then we will pray. I have no
I need you to lift your voice and say, Father. Father. I must not suffer in vain. Three weeks waiting was a long time. I must not suffer in vain. That information I requested, that information I desire, that insight I need. Father, I welcome you. Lord, I welcome you. I must not wait in vain anymore. I must not wait in vain anymore. That which I need to do to access the help that has been sent. That which I need to do to accept, to access the information, the insight, the knowledge, the understanding. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This prayer is a very important prayer. There are times I need help. And everybody would need help at some point. Mm -hmm. But the person who's going to help you must be free to help you. Mm -hmm. They must be free to help you. Because if they're not free to help you, you're stranded. Yes. The Bible says, move on to him who is alone when he goes. There are many reasons why somebody can be alone. The person that's supposed to be walking with you may have gone. They may have been called away to an emergency. They may be unwell. So there are many reasons. We say, move on to him that is alone. But you don't find out why is that person alone. The Bible says, I was sent to help you. For the Prince of Persia delayed me. <coughs> we made a joke, my husband made a joke of this at Coventry meeting. That people are praying against Prince of Persia when it's the Prince of Egypt. Oh, that is <laughs> <laughs> but the reality of this is that there is somebody delaying me. I don't care who they are for the purpose of this prayer. You can ask God to show you who they are when you get back home. Oh, you are going to declare today and say, Father, I know that I need help. I pray today, everyone that is tied down, what is meant to help me, I declare, heaven, release them from captivity in the name of Jesus. Pray quickly, pray quickly, pray quickly. Hey, that I meant to help me. They that are meant to assist me. They that are meant to equip me. I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, they are redeemed. They are redeemed. They are redeemed. They are redeemed. From captivity. They are redeemed. In the name of Jesus. They help us. They help us. I require. In the name of Jesus. I welcome them help. I declare. They are meant to help. They are meant to assist. They are meant to support. They are meant to love. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. When your helper is available, they must have peace to be able to listen to you. Amen. They must have peace. They themselves must be okay. We had a meeting in Lagos some years ago. And one of the people who was meant to lead today, one of the special songs at the conference, sent a message to the group early in the morning. In the back of the ambulance, and now he's going to AM. I said, Lord, how did this come about? They meant to lead a song at CPJ conference. And in the back of the ambulance, saw the child, treated the child, she took the child home and came back to the but I have to ask God where that lapse went. Mm -hmm. So the person that is meant to help you must have peace of mind. If I'm troubled and you bring your own problem, mm -hmm. I, you know now. Mm -hmm. You know. So you're going to say, Father, Father, for the remaining days of this year, for the remaining days of this year, and the years after that, and the years after that, the helpers you have allocated to you, will experience peace. Will experience peace. Will experience peace.
and if I miss it, they pick it. If I miss it, they pick it. By virtue of repeated episodes, I have come to know who those people are. So when they say, oh, my be, God says this. Let me give you an example. God told me that a group of people, a group of women were going to contact me. I had it in a dream. So in that dream, I found myself at a women's conference. It was a huge crowd. There were so many of them on that, in that conference. And after settling down, I looked at them all and I found out that they looked different from me. I was wondering, I said. So I called to speak to their leader. I said, hi. I'm different from you. Why did you invite me? And she said, ah, it is to make us accepted, man. We know that you do not, you are not part of us. But when your face is on the flyer, people will trust us. I said, no. There is no association between the light and the dark. I am not of you. And I left. So the Lord said to me, they are coming. And I said, Lord, when I woke up, I said, Lord, how do I recognize them? Mm. Many people say the invitation. Mm. And the Lord said, you will carry it. You must carry it. So I kept my hostel information to hand. Invitation to speak, they coming. <laughs> and then one day, I received an email. Hello, woman of God. How are you doing? I'm blessed the Lord for your life and what God is doing through you. Story, story, story. <laughs> and we would like to invite you to speak at our women's conference and international conference. One reply. Hello, says. Thank you for contacting me. Please introduce yourself to me on Facebook. Hmm. I need to see your profile. So she sent me a Facebook profile. I clicked on the Facebook profile. There in the profile picture was a woman holding hostel. Hey. I said, I spoke in your I said, ah, hey, you know. <laughs> which means the whole God. There you are. So the day when I think it was about the second or the third day, when one of my trusted years said, ah, oh mommy, I had a dream. I said, what was it? said you were ministering to people. There was a line in front of you. And as you lay hand on somebody, you mistakenly knocked off the veil, the whatever they had made. She said, as what they put on their uh, face went up, it was an animal on their face. I said, oh, you came late. I said, please be very prompt. I said, you came late. I said, they've come and gone. So God had delivered that somebody. But she was just taking her time to tell me. So be sensitive. We have spoken about all of it. If you are close to somebody, God is trying to reach them. He can't reach them because they are distressed, because they are worried about the situation. Be informed. The pastor who pastored me when I was in second year in medical school, ran into trouble. I was in my house about eight years ago, no, 10 years ago. Early hours on Sunday morning. Oh, one of those visions. I told my husband, I said, no, he was the one, he, he said, you were, you were very busy. Your face looked very busy. I didn't want to disturb what was happening. So I told him, I said, this pastor, I've not spoken to him for several years. I said, from early hours of this morning, you and I walked into his church in a bad way. I said, as we were walking him, he was walking out. And he said, I've had enough. I'm tired. I'm going. Uh -uh. If I was a Yoruba man, they would have listened to me. I said, you went to attend to some things. I went straight to the front of the church. And I said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This was all in the vision. I said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I said, and people were responding to me. As I continued to say, praise the Lord, 
pastor's wife was trying to organize drama picnic. And I was looking at her and saying, drama? In the midst of all of this, your husband has just walked out. You are organizing drama. So I said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. As I continued to say praise the Lord, and I walked up and down in front of the church, I found out that the sound of the people responding to me were increasing. Mm -hmm. So I was saying, if this is not all the people responding to me, but then I noticed that the people sitting in the front row of the church were kings. They were royalties. All decked off. And I was like, but the kings are not shouting. But this sound is a lot. So I looked up. First level was full. Second level was full. Third floor was full. I could not see the end of the height of people connected to service. Pastor didn't see that he had left. So my husband says, call him now. I said, boy, he's in church. My husband said, send the message. I sent the message. Hello, Pastor Dan. How are you doing? I need to talk to you. He replied immediately. Shock number one. Service is going on. What's Pastor doing on Facebook recently? That was when I started to realize, okay, this is serious. He said, is it urgent? I said, it can wait. But please, don't do anything until I've spoken to you. So church finished. Of course, he called me immediately. <coughs> he said, wow, how are you? How do, what, what brought you? I said, this is serious. I told him to do my part. He burst into tears. He said, I told my wife this morning as we left home, I'm going to make the announcement in church. It is over. We're mm -hmm. going back to the north. I said, well, in case you need to know, God looked all over the world and he couldn't find anybody and chose me. He said, I didn't know what was happening to you, but if you need help, my husband is available. Within four weeks, church should grow. Pastor Dan was speaking on the, on the radio. I think it was radio or TV. Mm -hmm. We had already started a program and people were connected. The sad thing is today, Pastor Dan is going to grow. Mm. He finished his job. Mm. We did not know that his going was very close. Mm. And so Danny, look, if you see him in the last few years, boom, 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 it was on full flare. Mm. And he just finished his work and When I saw that announcement on Facebook, ah, cha 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 I said, Lord. I didn't even know by the time. You can imagine if that man went back. He would have died in depression, died in frustration. And you couldn't be free, available, accessible for God to speak to you regarding somebody's destiny. If God says, get up now, pray for Ayo. <coughs> Will you do that? Yeah. Many of us attend only to our needs. Yeah. Remember what we said yesterday? Yeah. What is the need for God? Yeah. Lift your hand and say, Father. Father. Please help me to be found worthy. Please help me to be found worthy. When you speak, when you need to pass a message across, when you need to show somebody, when you need to save somebody, then we are available. I am ready and open for you. I am ready and open for your youth. I am ready and open for your youth. Help me, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name, we have prayed.